Hello. Uh, Thursday is Thanksgiving, so I'm thankful for Thursday being Thanksgiving. Um, welcome, Internet people. Uh, because Thursday is Thanksgiving, I'm not really expecting anybody to show up to today's open house, but um, I wanted to talk about uh, color therapy, probably work on this painting a little bit, possibly that one. That's the one I talked about last time that I thought was done, and then I've decided it's not quite done, so I might work on that one, I'm not sure. Um, I have a lot of notes with me because um, ever since I had my stroke, um, I don't remember things real well. I used to be able to memorize and give speeches and uh, recite things quite well, and that's not true anymore. So um, I have some notes to help me help me with this. Um, the reason I want to talk about color therapy today is because there have been some studies um, done that uh, look at the idea of color therapy, which has been around for a very long time, um, back into the ancient Egyptian, uh, Grecian, and Chinese cultures even. Um, but in the West, it's, it hasn't been around quite that long. But um, anyway, um, and there are a lot of uh, medical studies uh, that are dealing with the effects of color therapy with different kinds of physical and um, hidden disabilities and things like that. And so, um, you know, I wanted to discuss that a little bit since I'm working with color as an artist um, and doing this project to raise awareness about hidden disabilities. I thought that might be a fun thing to talk about. Um, <clears throat> Uh, one of the things that probably a lot of people are aware of in terms of color and uh, is, is also light therapy. Um, light, uh, seasonal affective disorder, for example, is, is uh, something that's uh, come to a lot of people's attention about the kind of uh, effects of depression you can get um, in the wintertime because there's not as much sunlight. So um, the idea that sun, light, color can affect us isn't exactly new. Like I said, it's uh, thousands of years old. But um, in your everyday life, you might think about things like um, when you paint a room a color, uh, whether you realize it or not, you might be choosing the colors based on an emotional uh, response or something like that. Or a lot of people will choose colors for painting the room, the walls of a room, uh, with the hopes of treating certain emotional uh, feelings or even physical um, con uh, conditions. Um, you know, people associate blue with the sky, green with the grass, things like that, and so they want to bring those natural elements into their, um, their homes uh, as paint colors on the walls. Another thing a lot of people are familiar with are healing crystals, using crystals in rooms to break the sunlight into uh, patterns and reflections uh, in an effort to try to heal. So color, light, uh, sunlight, all those things are, are um, really, really uh, impop popular in, in all kinds of cultures throughout history. Um, I think Goethe was one of the most significant people who studied the psychological effects of color. So although a lot of people are skeptical about it, I think, I think it's kind of uh, a good thing to look at and uh, keep an open mind, you know. Um, there's a, one, one of the studies that I ran across was dealing with um, exploring patient views on the acceptability and the feasibility of using color to describe their um, illness, which in that particular study was osteoarthritis pain. So it was a study asking patients uh, if they'd be willing, the acceptability factor, to describe their pain in terms of color, and then the feasibility of actually you of actually using color terminology to describe pain, and whether the the goal was to kind of determine whether color terminology is something that could be used by people patients to effectively communicate their pain to their healthcare providers. So I thought that was an interesting study. Um, the, the, the study looked at six groups of people um, with knee osteoarthritis pain. Um, and the first thing they did was uh, discuss the idea of using color to describe pain. 
um, to see whether or not the participants could actually associate pain with color. And then they uh, talked about how colors relate to changes to intensity and different pain qualities. Um, so they went even further than just saying, you know, a color terminology could relate to pain period. Then they looked at like the levels of pain, the intensity, the different kinds of pain, like throbbing pain, sharp pain, you know, to see if colors could relate to that. And then um, finally they, they asked whether the patients could envision um, color to describe pain to their doctors, to their nurses, to their healthcare providers. So um, that was kind of inter interesting questions to ask. And if you remember with this painting, I was talking about the red hot pokers of pain that I feel sometimes uh, and different things like my ears and different things that cause pain in my head. And um, so that was interesting because this painting actually kind of reflects this study. And <coughs> Sorry. And what I'm discussing today. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> now the results of this particular study that had to do with osteoarthritis pain was interesting because although the idea of using color was generally acceptable, it didn't suit all the participants <coughs> as a good way of describing their pain. The majority of the participants chose red to describe high intensity pain and the reasons given were dominantly because red symbolized inflammation, fire, anger, <coughs> and the stop signal in a traffic light system. So um, another result was that colors used to describe the absence of pain were chosen because of their association with positive emotional feelings such as purity, calmness, happiness. So a range of those colors would probably be like white and blue, <coughs> cooler colors, if you will, maybe yellow for happiness. Um, a range of colors was chosen to represent pain um, in intensity, changes in pain intensity. Aching pain was consistently identified as being associated with the colors gray and black, which I thought was really interesting, whereas sharp pain um, was described using a wider selection of colors, or a huge range of colors. <coughs> so the majority of these participants in this one study thought that they would be able to use color to describe their pain to healthcare professionals, although issues about the interpretability and standardization of colors are still in question. So the conclusion that this study came to was that for some patients, color using color to describe their pain experience might be a useful tool to improve doctor-patient communication. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, that's all kind of interesting to me since I am an artist working with color. So what I was kind of thinking would be um, a good idea is to just kind of think about the meanings of colors um, that are kind of well-known meanings or maybe you never thought about these um, as being well-known, but some of us kind of think these things uh, might be might be kind of familiar. Um, Jung actually uh, was a huge proponent of art therapy and he encouraged his patients to use color because he felt uh, this would help them express some of the deeper parts of their psyche. <coughs> For example, um, he found that introverts and extroverts are likely to choose different colors to uh, reflect their personalities. Uh, introverts choose bluish blues and extroverts choose red more often than not. And the colors you choose to wear on any given day might also say something about how you're feeling that day. Some days you might feel like wearing something lighter, uh, something brighter. Um, other days you might feel like wearing something a little bit darker, more somber. <coughs> and um, wearing certain colors can cause you to react differently in certain situations. Um, how, you say? Well, imagine if you went to a Christmas party all dressed in black as opposed to going to a Christmas party wearing red and green. Uh, you might feel more festive if you were wearing red and green than if you were wearing black. Think about the choices and colors of what you would wear to a wedding. Um, you know, how you feel at the wedding is going to be re reflected and impacted by the color choice of your clothes.
medical studies. Studies have shown that some people looking at the color red resulted in it having an increased heart rate, um, which then leads to additional adrenaline being pumped into their bloodstream. So there are some psychological and physical effects of color. Warm colors, uh, the two main colors would be warm and cool. Uh, warm colors such as red, yellow, orange can spark a variety of emotions ranging from comfort and warmth to hostility and anger. Cool colors such as green, blue, purple often spark feelings of calmness all the way through to sadness. So. Um, you can, again, think about these ideas when you're uh, looking at your everyday life, especially if you have hidden disabilities or any kind of disabilities or health problems. Um, you might consider painting your walls different colors to um, kind of help elevate your mood. Um, <coughs> uh, for example, if you, want, if you feel like you want to become a more creative per person, you can use the color purple in your life more. Uh, um, purple has that balance of the red and the blue, so it uh, gives you the stimulation and the serenity um, that's supposed to encourage creativity. Uh, so light purple, lavender, uh, is supposed to relieve tension. So if you're if you have any kind of issues with tension or anxiety, you could paint uh, your bedroom or your living room or your study wherever you hang out the most a lavender color, and maybe that would help home or office, you know. <clears throat> if you're looking for peaceful and calming environments, try greens and blues. Um, another cooler color blue is typically calming and serene and decreases rep respiration and lowers blood pressure. So uh, a lot of people choose to paint their bedrooms blue so that it's, you know, easier to fall asleep, they're more relaxed, they get a good night's sleep. Uh, you could also do that with your sheets, you know, pick your sheet colors. Pick your curtain colors um, for that kind of thing. Now, if you want an environment that's a little more stimulating, you want, might want to choose the warmer colors. Yellows and oranges will, um, uh, these are often associated with food. And so kitchens are oftentimes, um, restaurants and kitchens are oftentimes um, themed in yellows and oranges. <coughs> if you've ever seen the movie Super Size Me, um, it's on Netflix, I know. It's probably available other places, but you might watch that. There's a whole discussion about how those colors impact how much food you order at a restaurant. So, um, <laughs> check it out. Um, be careful using bright colors like orange and especially yellow. They do reflect more light, and so they're going to excessively stimulate your eyes, which can lead to irritation. So, you want to be careful which rooms you do that in. You probably don't want your office to be painted yellow. Although you may think it would help with alertness, it actually would cause you to have irritation to your eyes in a room where you're doing like a lot of computer work or something. Well, little did I know that my battery is close to dying, so I may lose you very soon. But I'm just going to accent a little bit of orange um, on uh, some of these uh, red hot pokers. Um, and then I'm going to put a little bit of yellow on there, too. Kind of a gold yellow. I wanted it to kind of be a, a golden yellow. Um, so we'll see what this does for us. Who knows? Um, I don't know. I kind of like doing all these different layerings. We've talked about that before. I guess that's my color therapy. Layer, layer, layer. I'm using a basically a coffee stir stick, I guess is what you would call this. It's just a little stick of some sort that I picked up somewhere along the way. Um, <coughs> and because this painting has so much texture on it, it works really well to uh, just kind of lay the stick along the texture. And I can't really see it that well, but um, I can feel when I hit the texture, and then I just kind of lift off from that. So, I mean, I, I kind of know where my red hot pokers are. I just would never want you to think I can see them very clearly, because I can't. <laughs> so, 
Anyway, I like how this one's coming along. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be done with this one soon, but I thought that about that one, so we'll see. Um, sometimes I think I'm done with something, and I'm not. Always interesting to me when that happens. So I feel kind of um, a little bit sad also today talking about talking to you guys on the internet about um, pen disabilities and color therapy and trying to be positive and moving along with my project. Um, last time, last time we met. Uh, was election day and it's kind of hard for a disabled artist to not be affected by election day. Um, it's probably pretty hard for a lot of people to not be affected by the outcome of that election. Um, <clears throat> I have no hope. <laughs> That's basically, you know, a lot of people are hoping the Electoral College will step in and do some magic tricks to make sure we don't go down into fascism overnight in January, but I believe that that is not going to happen. I think that the Electoral College will not overturn the... I don't even... How do you even call that an election? I mean, they call the states before the votes are counted. I've never understood that. From the time I was pretty young and you know we would watch election coverage on television they would say so and so is the projected winner with such and such percentage of the votes and I'm like such and such percentage of the votes is not a hundred percent so how do they do that how do they justify that to this day I don't understand that I don't understand and I'm sure there's some very intelligent political scientists out there who would be more than happy to explain it to me. So, you know, send me an email, find me on Facebook, explain it to me because I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't understand it on the local level. I sure don't understand it when a national election is at stake, President of the United States, and in this case, really scary Vice President of the United States. And remember, I live in Indiana, so. I know where from I speak. So, anyway, I digress. I should be talking about color therapy. So, I'm using um, a golden yellow right now. And normally this would be a more cheerful color. But because I'm accenting my red hot pokers with it, um, <clears throat> it's more to emphasize um, discomfort, I guess, if you will. That, again, going back to that metallic taste that I said from the beginning that this painting partially represents the dizziness and also the metallic taste that that I personally experience um, with a lot of the medications I take having kind of a metallic, uh, they leave a metallic taste in your mouth. And um, so this, this one is kind of representing a lot of different things and I think this goldy yellow is a good color to use for that. So. Now, as I'm doing this, I don't know if you can see it closely or not, but I'm being pretty messy. Right there? Yeah, I'm being pretty messy. I, uh, of course you're there. You haven't moved. I'm the one that moved. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, I'm uh, being pretty messy. Uh, and the end result is going to be that there will be some little shreds of different colors looping down and just kind of dripping around. And I kind of like that. So now I want to get a little bit more of our red. Let's see. Yeah, I like this red. And uh, refresh a little bit with the red. Oops. And vision is everything. You can't see any grab things, and it's not even the right thing. So now this is I'm just kind of I'm hardly even touching the canvas this time. This is just more um, almost like tripping from above the canvas. I don't know if you can see that very well, but just running a drippy line. I don't know, I 
just like to try different effects sometimes. Especially after I've already put some colors on, sometimes I like to go back and do, a do one of the colors I already did. So, we'll see how this turns out. I don't know. The reason I wanted to put the um, oranges and yellows on in a way that kind of would glomp and drip and everything is because they they also represent kind of the throbbing pain that um, this painting deals with. It's not just the red hot pokers. There's also uh, a lot of my hidden disabilities cause whether it's the inflammation or the arthritis or the bone spurs or what have you, sinus pressure. Um, there's a lot of throbbing pain, really bad, and gloppy drops of paint sometimes. That's what your muscles feel like. You feel like they're just gloppy. And sometimes I call it muscles, and it's really not muscles. It's your soft tissues. It's just all your soft tissue. So, oh, I just broke my stick. That's not cool. I don't care about the stick, but I've got paint all over my clothes. <laughs> don't really care about that either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Um, okay, I think I'm going to take this one off the... <coughs> oh, goodness. That's crazy. Well... Anyway, I'm going to take this one off the easel, put the other one up here, check the camera and see if we were even still recording. It might have shut off. I'm not sure. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I actually spun the canvas when I took it down just to encourage the drips to go a different direction. Because you know how much I love that. Okay, so now this one is the one that I thought was done, and it turns out it is not done. So, you can see that I added um, texture in circular form. So, um, let, me, uh, let me put some white on this one. I think white is what I want to do. I have to use a brush on this one. If I can get my white paint open. I can't seem to open that one. Let's hope this one opens. Okay, good. Oh. <laughs> it's been 20 minutes watching me try to open the jar of paint. <clears throat> okay. Oh, boy, oh boy, that is really on there. So the reason I added these circles is because I felt like um, this painting, which is called Balance, um, needed a little more expression of the, th the stuff that throws you off balance. And it occurred to me that, you know, basically circles. <laughs> could represent that. And so I added circles. And I kind of like it. So we'll see how this turned out. I don't know. I think it's going to be good. Circles make me dizzy, in case you, in case you were wondering, a lot of 
circles are there. I used to try to spend a lot of time keeping everything in my life on straight kind of angles, you know, right angles, straight lines, thinking that that was going to help me somehow. And uh, I don't think it really matters. I think dizziness is dizziness and, you know, circles don't help, but I don't think they really make anything worse. I think it's all the stuff that goes on inside your brain, you know, and how you perceive motion and space and um, if you have issues of dizziness, you know, I don't think straight lines make that much of a difference. You know, I could be wrong. Send me your thoughts. So, in case my camera shuts off for lack of battery, um, I'm just going to keep painting happy little white circles. And uh, next time around, I am hoping to have an entirely new painting to be working on. I'm hoping that I feel like our uh, one with the red hot pokers is done. Might just have to call that red hot pokers. I don't know. Can't remember if I had a temporary title for it or not. I'm hoping that uh, this one, after I do the white, I haven't decided yet. I didn't highlight any of this with black, so I might just leave the circles white and not use any other color to um, emphasize them. Um, I kind of think that might be cool on this particular painting, so we'll see how that goes. But um, anyway, next time I hope I hope to have like a whole new. I'm working on two texturing two more canvases right away. One is tentatively titled Alien, um, and the other is tentatively titled, oh, something like, I don't know, what am I going to call it? Not solitude, but um, something like that. Something like solitude. I don't know if I like that, but we'll see. We'll see. Sometimes my titles come to me first, and then the images come, and sometimes the texture and the images comes first, and then I know what the title is. So, we'll see, we'll see, I don't know. Anyway, if I lose you, come back next time. Happy little circles. I should probably say, since I was working on the one called Hope last time, which is the one that's over here, I don't know if you can see it very well, um, but that one's done. I like that one. I like the way I like the way it looks now. So I feel like that one's finished, which is why I wanted to move on to um, this one and then the two new ones that I started the texture for. Typically, I like to be working on two or three paintings at once, at least. Um, I very rarely do one painting all the way through um, without working on something else simultaneously. Actually, when I did this one, I, and I thought it was done, that was one of the few that I've ever done that I thought was done all the way through. One thing, I wasn't working on any others. And it's kind of funny that it turned out to kind of wake me up in the middle of the night with this, uh, nope, not done yet idea. So, <laughs> go figure. Crazy. Happy little circles. Happy little circles. So we were talking about the colors and the meaning of colors. And with white, you have all that stuff about purity and innocence and tranquility and all that. And... In this painting, they actually represent, my white circles actually represent kind of the opposite of that. So um, sometimes in art, you can turn things on their head and do the unexpected. Um, in anthropology, that's called killing the sacred cow. And so I've taken the sacred cow of what the color white means and 
upended it, so to speak, turned it on its head. Um, so yeah, kind of like that. That's kind of fun. Killing the sacred cow. I don't think I'll call that. If I named this painting that instead of balance, I don't know that anybody but fellow anthropologists would understand. <laughs> they would be wondering if that's a cow on the cliff or something, I suppose. I know a few anthropologists who would get it. Hello, anthropologists out there. I haven't forgotten you. circles. Yep. Uh, I'm getting dizzy looking at these circles. Of course. Uh. So, anyway. I forgot to turn my music on again, didn't I? Well, maybe next time. So yeah, Thanksgiving is Thursday. Despite all the gloom and doom in the world after the election, and you know, most people I know are pretty unhappy, <coughs> um, scared for friends and relatives, uh, or themselves, you know. Um, despite that, we still have to be thankful for what we do have, and you know, speaking as someone who was told from the time they were little tiny kid that you've got three years to live you got three years to live well <laughs> I always say I'm 53 so you know that's pretty good odds I guess or beating the odds or whatever you want to call it um, so I have a lot to be thankful for uh, my kids will be home my grown-up kids um, husband husband will be there my mom dear sweet mom um, my husband's mom and my very best friend in the whole world will be joining us for Thanksgiving dinner. So, it's going to be a full house, yummy food, lots to be grateful for, in spite of the crap going on in the world. So, I hope you guys have a good Thanksgiving. I miss my dad at Thanksgiving, but... Um, well, I miss my dad all the time. But it's hard when the family gets together and he's not there. Holidays are tough that way, aren't they? Anyway, happy little... This is boring, I know.